Well, it's harvest time and Mama Hoss has been at it. Look at here. Welcome to the Road by Road Gardening Show, the best dead gum gardening show on the internet where we talk about gardening, a little bit of cooking, and growing your own food. Now sit back and enjoy. Thank you for joining us. We're a gardening show here in South Georgia. I'm Greg. I'm Sheila. And we love gardening, we love harvesting, we love eating. And we're talking about harvesting today and preserving. It's that time of year. It's that time of year, and uh, I want you to look what all you got going on there. We're going to talk about each individual one, give you some insights on how you can preserve that wonderful harvest that you make. Because, you know, a lot of these things are great, but how do we extend them and keep them so that we can enjoy them all year long? That's what we're talking yeah. about. I think every day for the last three weeks, I've done something. Whether yeah. the freeze dryer, whether canning, um, water bath and I've had something going continuously so in my garden I've cleaned my cleanup states I'm cleaning up uh, it's a little early for us to be through with a lot of things but uh, watermelons have been mowed corn has been mowed green beans have been mowed and squash have been what about mowed. the facility facility has been mowed oh, well, so we're getting there. we're getting uh, Moving along to that next stage here, we'll be in a little little lull here for a little while. We'll have some cover crops going on, but then we'll be full swing again come August. But it's going to be a good time to feed those pollinators. Speaking of pollinators, I'm all in on pollinators right now. It is the height of my interest. Never had so many native bees in my garden. Never have I seen as many native bees as I have this year. So I'm going to make it a conscious effort going forward. I've always got something for the native bees to feed on about that that's a worthy cause isn't it so last week you were needing therapy yeah i'm doing better no better. better yeah so we salvaged some tomatoes tomatoes salvaged out pretty good by the way we're going to do a little mini taste test today okay. on this right here but uh some of the things took a hit watermelons yeah. took a major hit they, they just blew them up gone but uh winter squash took a hit i think we're going to be able to salvage some sun come out it's hot again it's beautiful outside, so... Now we're having the water. Now we're having the water, just that quick. <laughs> One extreme to the yeah. other. So we're going to do a little mini taste test here today, and the taste test is going to be on red snapper and hossinator. Okay. Because we get this question a lot, which one tastes the best? I don't know that there's a difference, but we're going to try and see. So I'm going to take my new Kershaw knife and slice these up. I got a little story to tell about my Kershaw knife. If you know me very much, you know I'm a knife guy. I love knives. I always carry a knife on me at least one, sometimes two. So I had this exact same knife, which is one of my favorite knives, a USA made Kershaw. And uh, we was at Universal with the grandbabies and me being a country boy, not knowing any better, they wanted to go over to, we was at Hard Rock Cafe and they wanted to go to Universal for, for dinner. So we walked down and was gonna take this river boat over there and we get down there and there's this security outfit just like you see in the airport where they go through this, I mean, it was the same exact thing. I said, oh my goodness, really? To get on a boat to go to university, you gotta go through this? And it dawned on me at that point. I said, I bet they're not gonna let me have my pocket knife. And then you went and asked them. So I went and asked them because I didn't want to get up there and they said, you got a pocket knife on you? So I asked them. No, sir, you can't carry a pocket knife in. Now, I don't understand why I can't carry a pocket knife in, but that's their rules. So me being as bright as I am, and I've done this before in the airport in Atlanta. It's a little trick there that has worked for me in the past. So what you do is you turn around and act like you're going to head back to the room, but you find you a potted plant. And you hide it in that potted plant, and on your way back through, you put it back out and put it in your pocket. So that's what I did. I turned around, I found me a potted plant, and I put it in there. I come back, I realized one of them guards had watched me place my knife in the potted plant, and my knife was not there anymore. So I lost a great knife. I ordered me another one. Somebody found a great knife. Somebody I has bet got you it was somebody, that security guard. Somebody in Florida's got a great knife that they're toting here <laughs> from, from Red here. But anyway, I ordered me another one because I love it so much. That's my knife story. All right, so let's move along here. Now, you don't know which of these is which. No. I do because I have one of the plates marked underneath there. But we're going to taste, and I've washed these tomatoes well. We're going to taste these, and we're going to come with a did maybe. Did you get any salt? I did get some salt, I thought. Yeah, right here's some seasoning salt. Let's try to figure out which we like the best. 
Is these three different types or two? No, two different types, but I got two tomatoes and one tomato. So that's just what I picked up. Okay, you wanna grab that salt book for these for us? And then we'll taste the other one right here. So there's no more go ahead and be slicing us another one right here. You know, speaking of that, some people peel their tomatoes for their tomato sandwiches and some people don't. I'm a peeler. I will every now and then eat one with the peeling on there, but I normally am a peeler. I peel my tomatoes for my sandwich. All right, so let's first taste this one right here. Taste that right there. Should have brought some paper towels. All right, just taste it, Mama Hoss. You can't eat it. I've got a mull okay, over Okay, mull over it. we got to move on. We got to... You need a cracker to cleanse your palate? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Right, here's the other one. Now, when I do taste tests, I have napkins. I know, I should have brought some. Da -da. Mm. I'm gonna be a little biased, yeah. I'm gonna be a little biased, but I'm not because I know which is which. I'm not gonna say. This one's sweeter, it's got more flavor. Okay, I like that one better. I do too. And there's a lot more different than I thought there was. I really i am a little upset by this fact that I mean, <laughs> that, uh, that there is that much difference because I love both varieties, but there is a, there is a big difference. Mm -hmm. I'm not even throwing something on that. Big difference. Taste this one again. Mm -hmm. All right. The one that we didn't think was so flavorful. Yes. Hall snare? Nope. Snapper. Really? So yep. we like the Hall better? We like the Hall snare better. So the oh. breeder told me that the Hall snare had more flavor than the Snapper does. Now the Snapper will make a bigger tomato than the Hall snare. But I have to agree the Hall snare was better to me a than the... A lot better flavor. A lot better flavor. Which is unusual. Snapper was just kind of blah. It was. It was unusual. It was that that much difference that we could really tell. But it was, mm -hmm. and I tried to pick out, make sure they was all the same ripeness, because that will affect the flavor. But oh, interesting. Yep, yeah, hallucinator was was one to taste there. If anybody else does that, if you grew the hallucinator red snapper, do the same thing. And let us know what your thoughts are. But it was that was pretty astounding there. Mm -hmm. Right. Moving along, what you got going on in your garden? You're in that stage also. I got where I took up the garlic and potatoes. I have um, sunflowers fixing to bloom. They're going to be gorgeous. Yep. A um, few of my tomatoes are about done out. I plan to clean them up this afternoon. <laughs> um, the wind blew. You're an overachiever when it comes to cleaning up, by the way. You, you take things out a little bit before I think you should. But you're one of those type. You like to get yeah. it up out of the way and move yeah, on. Yeah, it's just real messy, and there's only a few really small tomatoes on the top, and um, it's it's just I, I need I need that organization yeah, to move on. Yeah, it just yeah. looks like a jungle. Yeah. Well, we, uh, we had this conversation yesterday afternoon. This take us because all the rain we had, we got behind on our gardening, but we're going to catch up in a couple yeah, of Yeah, yeah. Yesterday I was feeling a little overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. A little overwhelmed. Yeah, I got a lot done this morning, so I'm, I'm doing a lot better in my garden. So, yeah, we're moving on. Pollinator time. I got zinnias starting to bloom, come in. A bunch of ice queen zinnias. Queenie? Ice queen. A Not the queenie. queenie, but ice queen. I need to plant some of the queenies, but I got some ice queen coming along. It's pretty nice, wonderful pink color to those. So, okay. on later time. All right, so let's talk about preserving. You know, we do all this work of growing this food, but what about preserving it? Moving on into the uh, moving on into the winter time, the fall, when we can enjoy our harvest all year long. Mm -hmm. Now, contrary to popular belief, we don't go to the grocery store much. No, bread, mayonnaise. Yeah. We could make our own mayonnaise and, and bread. I could. I, yeah. I have been watching. Some people doing that, fermenting the mayonnaise. Yep, that would be good. I need to try that. So anyhow, all of our stuff, and we have most of our meat in the freezer. We have cow that we kill probably about once a year, and we have a hog that we just uh, butchered, by the way, that turned out wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank so, you, Perry Farms. Yeah, Perry Hill Farms for that. They brought us a feeder pig, and it was, I, if you're hunting a feeder pig, 
you got contact Prairie Hill Farms to see if you can buy one from them because they have the perfect cross, which is a Berkshire and a manganese. Best and I've ever had. My heard. book, that's the best cross I've ever seen on a yeah. feeder pig. But we're not about feeder pigs, we're about gardening. So let's All get right. into it. So let's talk about food preservation. So you've got freezing, canning, fermenting. I'm going to take my glasses off like this because it makes me look intelligent. You just interrupted me. <laughs> Freezing, canning, fermenting, um, dehydration, and um, my new thing. Freeze dryer. Freeze dryer. And I use all these. I used to just only freeze and can, but now, especially the fermenting, I really like the fermenting. Um, it's just different. And you kind of get burnt out doing the same thing, the same recipe. So it's, I encourage you to experiment, try different things. Um, growing up, we, made, we just froze and pressure canned or water bath. Um, never really done anything else. By the way, I don't do any of this. I just stay out of the kitchen. And, and I, if she needs me to carry something outside to dump it, I'll do that. Or I'll go tote some jars or some other. But I'm not involved on any of this for two reasons. I, I don't really want to, and she doesn't really want me no. to be in there. So, therefore, we have a little agreement. I grow it, I have her harvest it, and then from there on, it's hers all the way out. So, yeah. you have watched the pressure canner a time. I watched or two. it, but that was a disclaimer yeah. there. I'm not going to take any credit for this. Okay. okay. All right. Although I do grow most of you it. You like to eat it. I do like to eat it. Yeah. So let's talk about freezing. So the main things, you can freeze any food. And what freezing does is take it down to zero and it just kind of holds it there and it will last indefinitely if kept frozen. Um I didn't know it lasts indefinitely. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. I mean, That's a long time. Sir. What you're doing, it inactivates when you get it down to zero. It inactivates any microbes and bacteria, okay. and it just holds it at that state. So as long as don't get freezer burn. Right now, free, you have to worry about freezer burn if you don't package it right, or if there's too much moisture mm -hmm. in the product. Would you say freezing is the easiest way of doing it? No, not really, because a lot of times when you freeze, you have to blanch. Okay. So you have to bring it um, to like a bowl. You can do it in the stove, the oven. Then you got to rapidly chill it. And the other thing you need to be careful about when you freeze it is don't stack it all up, because it needs to freeze quickly. So you need to have it evenly distributed. And takes up a lot of room. It does, but one of the biggest things about freezing, and we've had frozen food forever. We freeze most of all our meat. Yeah. We've been through a couple hurricanes here in our lifetime since we've been married. That we've been out of power for a number of days, mm -hmm. and that's the downside to me of freezing is you relied upon that electricity, and there's nothing more frustrating than having all your food in a freezer and it, it's spoiling. If you do lose electricity. It will keep in the freezer for about two days if you don't open the door. Do not open it. It's hard to do because yeah. you want to open and check on it, but it's hard to leave it leave it there and don't and don't open. Now that's like a chest or upright freezer. If you have it in your refrigerator, what I call refrigerator freezer, it's not going to last as long because that compartment just doesn't keep things. It's not as right. So that's really the only drawback to freezing is that life expectancy yeah. if you lose power. And you know what? We, we say, well, that could never happen. But we look back what happened a couple of years ago. I can remember those couple of days of grocery stores. Well, we had open. to get a generator. Yeah. We've had to go get generators before and, and things like that. So yeah. things can happen. The uh, other thing you need to pay attention to is and when you have something frozen, you've got to remember to thaw it out. Mm -hmm. um, and when you thaw that food out, you've got to be just as careful with it as any other food because then those microbes, those bacteria can surface. So you're supposed to most time thaw stuff out in the refrigerator slowly? Well, some things, but um, you can thaw it out in water. 
I'll set it in the sink in the morning mm -hmm. and then let it get mostly unfrozen and then go put it back in the refrigerator if I'm going to cook it that night. Well, but be really careful with thawed meat just as you would fresh meat. Follow the same rules. Yep. So, um, let's, so we mainly freeze corn and our meat. Mm -hmm. I used to freeze my peas and butter beans, but now I got where I like to can them. Canning is uh, probably the best method out there, would you say? Because it's quick and easy. You can take the lids off of it, empty it into it. Yeah, as it, far as preparation. Although it can be the most intimidating one of all of them, right? Yeah. Um, a lot, I hear people talk about, I'll never pressure can, my granny, my mama, the pressure canner blew up, they talk about how scared they are, how intimidated. I've never had one of those experiences, so I'm sure if somebody witnessed that, it would be... Traumatic. Traumatic. But if you have the right equipment, safe equipment, and you follow a trusted recipe, um, don't be doing anything else when you pressure can. You've got to be focused. It is safe. You know, one memory that comes back to me, it must have been about 20 years ago, I was up in the mountains, in the hills of Tennessee, northern Tennessee, back in the woods. And it was harvest season. And we pulled up at this house, and they were canning outside on a fish A cooker. lot of people do that. I have never but seen that I don't that know before. how you can regulate the heat i guess um, they just sit there with it and dial it down but i, I could not believe that's their but that was their way of doing it i guess because they've had somewhere down the line they'd yeah, had asked it, it before yeah blew up it wouldn't mess up the house so, so the shelf life of your um can so the, well you can't when you say can and jars that the same thing jars yeah the canning that. would it be this class mm -hmm. no it would be different okay. it's different the USDA says the shelf life that it is good for a year. Um, to, and that's to get the best nutritional value. Now, I make things five or six years old now, mm. and it's fine. Yeah. And you have to, yeah. you may not know it. <laughs> not saying that's what's recommended, but um, it does last, took me more than a year. But the USDA recommends that. Um, some of the higher acidic foods do not last as long as the others, but one of our favorite things as a can is green beans. And potatoes. And potatoes. Of course, tomato juice, a soup. Yeah, that's a good one. That's yeah, a favorite this favorite. is a good winter time. Um, last year I started doing the peas and my butter beans. We had some of these Sunday. Mm -hmm. So good. So what I love about these right here, especially if I'm preparing dinner, if I don't know exactly what I want to fix, I just glance over on the shelf above in the kitchen there. And we have these open shelves and I just look up there and I see everything is there and I just reach up and grab it, open it up, dump it into a boiler, warm it up, and it's done. Ba-boom. Ba-boom. Yeah. Easy peasy, especially if we want to cook greens, beans, and potatoes together. And the soup thing is wonderful for the wintertime. All i got to do there is add meat to it. Yeah. Um, something new I did this year, and I've got a video coming out on it with my tomatillos, is some salsa verde. verde. Well, I'm good with that, but yeah. it's very good. Very good. Um, I like that. I did that this year instead of the red salsa because you didn't grow any paste tomatoes. God, well, I can't eat the red salsa as well as that. I like the green butter and I do the red. The yeah. red gives me heartburn. So, in talking about canning, a lot, uh, other than people being scared of the pressure canner, you hear the stories of botulism. you got to be weary, and you do, but did you know... Botulism was more prevalent in meat than in his vegetables. Well, I looked up on the CDC website, and there's an average of 110 cases a year of botulism. Per world or the United States? United States. Um... And the majority is in Alaska, and it has to do with their 
way they preserve some of their traditional native foods. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. And then the other 70% is what's called infant botulism. And most of that has been traced to like corn syrup and honey. So very few cases of botulism, if any, from home canned foods. Hmm. So it's very safe. So don't worry about that if you follow the recipe. And be clean. Be clean and yeah um and the other thing people ask is, is they don't know when to pressure can or when to water bath right um and that is all based on the acidity of the food if the food has a lower has a ph of 4.6 or lower um capital candy Oh, I did it, that last week. I'm going to be partaking about this right here when you explain it about that. And you can add lemon juice to increase the acidity. Or lime juice. Or lime juice. So on my tomatoes, I always add lemon juice. Um, but in, in my reference that I use is the Blue Ball Book. Um, this was like a 1990s edition. There's newer ones. And it's online. So you Am can, I overdoing that? No. There's some pineapple down in there, too. Is that hot? No, that's good. That's good. Um, and then another thing about pressure canning and water bathing is do you raw pack or um, hot pack? And that just means do you um, cook it before you put it in the jars or do you put it in the jars and pour um, hot water over it? Well, you knock this one out of the pot right here. Is that good? Yeah, I'm making a mess in it. That's good. We'll just make a mess. Where, where did our napkins go? It's okay. I don't need a napkin. Okay. So now let's talk about um, dehydration. So I had oh, a... Oh boy, dehydration. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, that's my new... Um, and you thought it was just going to be a fad. I did, you? but it runs every night. Yeah, and every day. Yeah, I'm going to let Jerry try one of these. <laughs> Jared's our Jared's our man. He's the man. Cameraman. Our producer of the show. So I had this inexpensive um, dehydrator that I started out with, and I did mainly onions. Remember the smell yep. of the onions? Onions and peppers and my roselle um, and figs. Oh, my figs. And it, it, it served its purpose. I tried some carrots and some sweet potatoes, and I just wasn't crazy about the food shrunk. The texture was kind of chewy. It just went down. For onions and peppers, I think it did okay. Mm -hmm. um, so then I moved up to the freeze dryer. The Mac Daddy Harvest Ripe freeze dryer that sings me to sleep every night. Yeah. Every single night I hear this thing humming. And then what's so wonderful about the freeze dryer is it's got a bell alarm on it. <laughs> so about 3.30 in the morning, I get woke up with this bell alarm that some seal is lost or something. No, oh, no, you know that it's done and I need to either... Okay, it's done at 3.30 in the morning and this bell will not shut up <laughs> till somebody gets up and turns it off. Well, then I well, get you up... you can get up and press a button, but you press the wrong button. And I don't know time. what button yeah. to press and it just goes downhill yeah. from there. So... I freeze dried some potatoes and I cubed them so I can use them in my soup. And then I also um, just took my coffee grinder and I've got to work and just whip up some mashed potatoes. Now this is probably about six batches of cherry tomatoes. Really? And it makes a powder. It makes a powder. And what I plan to use these is like tomato paste. So I don't have to buy any more tomato paste. Mm. I also made a season with it. It was real good. Um, did a lot of squash when the squash was in. Uh, tomatoes. All right. So you got to tell them about cock hill and, and their tomatoes. Because yeah. we tried tomato sandwiches the other day right. and it didn't work. I haven't quite got the... Um, rehydrating thing figured out but Cahill did some green tomatoes and reconstitute them and fried them up and they said they were just as good as the fresh they could you imagine having fresh tasting tomatoes year-round yeah I'm gonna try that 
Um, oh, I did this weekend. This is basil. I want you to smell this. That got a little hot there at the end. No, I want you to taste it. I got a taste like it. Tastes like basil. Smell. It yeah, it's like pretty, pretty strong. Walking through the garden. And what's so good about the freeze drying is it retains all of its nutrients. Um, but I mean, everything has a place. Show them the milk there. Oh yeah, the milk. And I've used this a couple times because we do not drink a lot of milk. We just do not. And so a lot of times when I buy it, it goes bad. So this way, if we need to cook with any milk, we got it. Yeah, I could just reconstitute it. Oh, and this is my latest thing. You hadn't tried it. Is figs. Now let me tell you about his figs. He's got how many fig trees? Probably about 13. They're working on the building. Oh, I thought he was knocking, trying to break in. So he goes out there every day and he eats all the ripe figs. Well, it's my way of enjoying my afternoon. I like to go out there and I walk through there and I know where every fig is at. So the day before I mentally catalog every fig on that tree with the ripeness of it. So I say to myself, limb 4-8 is going to have a fig ripe tomorrow afternoon. So I know that and I understand when I come back out tomorrow afternoon, I got to check limb 4-8 on tree 14 over there. And you went out and they were all gone. And they were all gone and I went into a little bit of a yeah. Uh, 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 I had a moment, is what I had. So I freeze dried them. Mama Hoss had been out and got all my figs. That, that's, that's strong, yeah. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. I mean, what a great snack. So you better enjoy all of them because I'm going to get me another wow. batch. Isn't that cool? So then the last, the last way I like to preserve, let me get some of this out of the way here is fermenting and you've got some stuff over there that's been fermenting. I've got a mess over here. Here's your figs. Careful candy. Okay. So you need to taste one of these. So now this is not cooked off yet. This is still in the process of... Right. But I don't know if he can get those bubbles coming up on the camera. Um. But I started this Saturday and it needs to go about seven to eight days. Um, and I do have a video on this coming out. But these are all the cherry tomatoes and it's just cherry tomatoes, onion, basil, and garlic. And it's everything from our garden. Beautiful. It's only pretty. Yep. Um, now one of the things I love about the pickling is, is you, you, you ferment. Ferment, excuse me. Well, pickling ferment. It's not the same thing, but it's close to sort of is is all the probiotics that it is for your, your, mm -hmm. your gut, gut system. Yeah. Let's see. So these are some carrots I did back when the carrots was coming in. I don't know if I can see if you can get one of those out. And these, once you ferment them, then you just store them in the fridge. And we usually eat them up in about six months. But we like these on salads, so and mm. that's what I plan to do that too. Mm, that's good. Now, this is some kohlrabi that I did back, I guess that was back in early fall. Mm hmm. Now, this kohlrabi, I remember tasting it, it's really good. Yeah. Yeah, I did two quarts of it, that's all we've got left. Reminds you of a turnip root just a little bit, but a mm -hmm. pickled turnip root. So, so when you're fermenting, you're combining salt to control the microorganisms. So you suppress the bad and you encourage the good. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much. Um, well, now a lot of people do pickles that way. Yeah, these are some dill pickles. And I've got a big, um, what do you call that thing? Big thing, big jar. No, no, you're talking about the ceramic thing. Yeah. Yeah, I can't think of anything right now. That I've got. Croc. Croc um, of um, pickles going in. Mm -hmm. I, other than, now my sweet pickles I do can, but my dill pickles I will only ferment because they're crispy. They are. And perfect. So, if you need a reference for how much to preserve, what to preserve, what, how much for your family? If you go to Hulsh University, 
and click on free downloads, there's a Hoss Family Garden Planner. And it goes from how much space you need to plant what you need, how many people you're going to feed. Um, you can get yearly food estimates and how much you need to preserve or store for the number in your family. Yep. So there you have it, folks. Not only do we grow it, but we put it up so that we can have it. You think about this right here. We're almost, is it almost self-sufficient? With mm -hmm. just what you see right here. Now, our meat's a little different story here, but with this right here, you can but survive. But we get our meat from, like, my stepdad sure. right. fattens out our cow. And, you know, not only is this self-sufficient, but it's delicious as well. It's better than what would you go buy at the grocery store. So you, it's, you're not just doing it for self-sufficiency. Nutritional value is also better. Yeah, you know, when I go in the grocery store, you know, there's always the fresh produce section. I never even go. Never. And, Never. Yep. Are the canned? Nope. It's always bread and cheese. Yep. yep. It's and butter. Butter. Yeah. We use a lot of butter. A lot of butter. Yep. Okay. Garden spotlight. Garden spotlight this week. Well, we got a great one this week. Let me tell you about Miss Nancy Wallace. Miss Nancy Wallace is in the great state of North Carolina, Wake Forest, and she sent us some pictures. And I'm gonna go through these the best I can because I thought these were absolutely wonderful. Nancy has got some container gardening going on right there. She's growing celebrity red snapper Amish paste sun gold tomatoes. Wonderful choices there, Nancy. I just harvested a bed of potatoes and a bed of garlic and have replaced them with bush beans and purple eye caterpillars. I have a lot of, I have a bed of peppers including red and purple cayenne, poplano, Mama Mia Rosa, and Galilea. All but two of these were grown from seed from hops. Beautiful and consistent germination. I also have three varieties of cucumbers growing in grow bags up string trellises. Seeds also from hops, and there are a lot of flowers to attract pollinators. And there's Nancy's peppers right there. She did a great job on those. And I want you to look at her onions. You know, onions are one of the funnest Easiest things to grow in the garden if you follow directions. Mm -hmm. Look at there. Ain't she? This are air lasts for months right there. And uh, there's some of her tomatoes right there in the green stage. She got a good crop there. And here is Nancy. Nancy is sporting. It's like she's showing off some garlic right there. Was mm -hmm. that an onion? Uh -huh. Sure, that's a garden and she's got her mission hat on. I got one of those hats, uh, Nancy. I love my mission hat. So thank you, Nancy, for sending that in. It's great to hear from my friends in North Carolina. Good job. Good job, Nancy. All right, and we've got the old goat drawing. So the old goat, if you don't know, is hid here on the set somewhere. It's a figurine. If you find that old goat, he moves around every week. But if you find the old goat. Put it in the comments below and we'll do a draw the week after for a coveted horse merchandise prize. And this week's winner is Hayden Bishop. So Hayden, send us your shipping information to custserve at and we'll get you a coveted prize sent out in the mail. And let's not forget, we got the Monterey giveaway. I'm going to clean up some of your clean mess here. Some right there. The great company Monterey sponsors a giveaway every week on the Road by Road Show. And it is these four products right here, if I can get them off of there. It is these sticky traps. And these sticky traps, we just started carrying them this year. These are wonderful. The greenhouse as well as out in the garden. So you can monitor your pest out there. And also, if you got a Japanese beetle problem, it's a good mm -hmm. trap for those. Monterey horticultural oil. Y'all folks, it's got I got a lot of pictures this week, people with soft body insects such as um, aphids. Wonderful product for aphids right there, horticultural oil. Spray it on, suffocates them, it'll kill them. You can spray this horticultural oil any time of the day. And then we got fish and guano, which is a natural fish and guano fertilizer there that you can use a foliar spray or soil drinks and complete disease control, which is a bio fungicide right there. It works wonderful for all different kinds of diseases there. You can also do a soil drench with that. So there we have it there, folks, the four item giveaway from Monterey. And last week's uh, winner was? Bill Graham. 
And the question we asked last week was how much rain, because everybody was getting, there was a lot of people that's in a drought. I didn't realize that. A lot of yeah, I know, especially out in Texas. Yeah, out in Texas. Um, I think the most rain somebody said they got was like 15 inches. That was rather with us then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. So what's the question this week? The question this week is, and this is always fascinating to me, but you know, we talked about pickling, not pickling, but fermenting just a moment ago. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite thing to ferment? Or that you would like to ferment. Or that you would like to ferment there. Because there's a whole host of things you could ferment. What, and I guess the most popular would be pickles, but what is your... Sauerkraut, I think. Sauerkraut, yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, that was some sauerkraut. Yep. There. You didn't try what, is, what interests you the most? What do you pickle? Not pickle, I keep on pickle. What do you ferment the most or what would you like to ferment the most? Put it in the comments below and that will enter you for the drawing. Do we have Bill's uh, shipping address? Mm -hmm. We do? Okay. Bill will get you a four pack of the model race sent out to you right there. And next week, put that in below your favorite and it'll put you in the drawing for the model race giveaway. Look at the whole host of things right here. Mm -hmm. Somebody's been busy. And look, yeah. I've got stuff going right now. What I'm doing now is I'm doing, I want to make some um, homemade barbecue sauce. And, and ketchup. I don't really care about ketchup. ketchup no. But I want to make the barbecue sauce and I need some uh, tomato sauce. And I've never done just tomato sauce. So it's a long process because you got to cook all that water out and drain it out. Um, That's what you was doing all last night. Yeah, I put it in the crock pot. I think I'm gonna do a video on that, on um, all these extra tomatoes. Yep. All right, folks, time to wrap it up. Glad you uh, joined us, and we talked about harvesting. We talked about preserving. You know what you can do with all this kind of stuff. It's just, I mean, is the possibilities are endless. Basically, what you can do. Mm -hmm. Just set some standards of, of what you want to do. If you don't, if you haven't done it before, start out small. And do a few things, kind of work your way into it, and it's kind of contagious after you get yeah. going. And we have a lot of videos of the stuff I've done in the last couple of years. And if there's something that I haven't done that you want to see, put it in the comments and I'll look into it. Yep. All right, folks. Thank you very much for joining us. Now it's time for you to get outside and get dirty. <laughs>